Well, good morning, everyone. Today we are here to attempt to weave some hound's tooth with um, some other colors, well, other, main color on either side, with a strip of hound's tooth down the center because I'm worried that this color combination will be too eye dazzling once it's being a hound's tooth. So we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But basically, for hound's tooth, all we need is sets of two colors, like too dark, too light, too dark, too light, too dark, too light, too dark, too light in the up and down position so that the darks and lights are equally alternated when it's up and down. Uh, what I'm going to do, because this is the less visually stimulating color, I'm going to do a band of only this color as a warp on either side and then do the alternates in the middle so that we get our houndstooth pattern. But I wanted to see if we could weave a simple houndstooth on the little uh, double heddles and then I think in another video I will see if I can actually warp this as though it is a double heddle loom because it is so theoretically we should be able to warp this as a double heddle loom and just have two strands going through the front beater on every single one each time that's for another video but today we're going to try and do some hound's tooth I'm not gonna um warp up a super huge length but I learned a couple cool warping techniques um that include rolling up as you roll up your bars uh rolling it up onto like a piece of parchment paper or something crunkly so it helps take up some of the extra I don't know that I'll be able to use those techniques on this particular instance because this is not the same kind of loom that I saw the woman warping she was doing something like our other loom who I haven't officially named, but she's too cool to be called an Oompa Loompa. So I'm going to go with Petaluma for our first rigid huddle loom. So anyway, we'll try that on Petaluma as well with linen because she has more holes in her heddles. So we will try to do some linen when we rewarp Petaluma. But for this one, we're going to rewarp as we did before. If you haven't seen my other videos, please go back. We're going to rewarp. Um, I will record part of it, probably not all of it. Um, but I will show you what it looks like as we go along and I hope that we can make like a cute little like houndstooth table runner or like a little uh, some sort of little bolster. Now because it's houndstooth I'm not going to be able to beat it as hard because then it will cover up all the warps but also I'm not using something rough on a smooth warp so it shouldn't slide down the warps as easily and compact as much. We're solving several problems by using good yarn. This is the yarn from Lithuania. This is a more rustic wool, but I've come to understand that it is not actually that rough. It just feels a touch rougher than like alpaca, for instance. But I have uh, balled up everything and we're ready to roll. And so we will be warping this for some hound's tooth today. Thanks for coming along. And if you would hit that like or subscribe button, I won't ask you again in the whole video. All right, let's go. Okay, to get us started, I've been using the door of my create room as a warp winding tool. It's working out okay. So uh, I have some of the bright green to be the accent color on our houndstooth middle in the cross section. Um, yeah, should be pretty good. I'm going to do the center in the alternating light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, and then put the sage on either side. So I will show you what that's looking like as I'm working through it. Um, I don't necessarily want to make this a super long video, but I will show you as we're going. All right, so what I wanted you to see here is this is now at least hooked to the back um, breast bar. I'm not going to move this. I'll move the camera to accommodate what we are looking at here. But um, what we have here is these areas are where we will get the actual hound's tooth pattern just in the center so because i was thinking that was just too, too much too much visual basil um and i will take you around the back to show you what it looks like if you hear a cat meowing he's upset that he's locked out of my office right now while i have loose yarn everywhere um i will show you what the back looks like uh i saw someone working on their rigid had a loom that's not what this is however they had a very good idea wherein they rolled up with the wefts they rolled up like a piece of paper or some sort of soft papery or material that kind of like takes up some of that slack so i'm thinking i will either roll it up with like a piece of batting or i will grab 
some pieces of like shipping foam that I can make into long strips to wrap the warp over. But let me show you what the back of this looks like. Um, after we do the back, which I'm going to show you, after we do the back, we will roll it all up basically onto the back uh, bar. And then in the front, we will tie it on. And I'm going to try to use a technique that she used as well that made it look like it was pulling in a much more even way than I was getting it to do it before. So I think we can utilize a couple of the thoughts from that. And I will link her uh, information down below since she was so helpful with her video about Houndstooth. And that's the only reason I felt confident enough to try because it was actually a very nice video. And I thank you for that. I've forgotten your name in the moment, but I will link it down below because you deserve recognition for being able to teach my autistic ass something. So let me show you the back of the loom over there. Okay, so I kind of threaded it from the back, basically. There's a lot of ways you could have done it, but that's the way I did it, um, so that I could just divide my warp in half and have the ones go out to the holes. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, hook this so it's a little bit tighter, take up the slap, slack, and roll this up with a piece of paper or a piece of foam or something, maybe some bubble wrap, to kind of evenly take up any slack in the warp and hopefully that will keep it more even as we pull it tight and roll this up. Once we roll this up, we will have just a little bit of slack left down there at the front. We will tie that one onto the boards and then we'll be ready to do some hounds toothing. Well, hello. Everyone's rolled up onto the back of the Lumba, as you can see. This is our other bar. Now, because I saw the lady do this, we're going to try it. If it doesn't work, I'll let you know, but we're going to give it a try because it looked more efficient than what I was doing before. Here is the back of the loom. You can see my little roll of foam there. That seemed to be okay. I don't, I don't see anything wrong with it, I guess. And this I have tied up. Now, what the lady did, let me keep that out of here, was she took like groups of four, such as this, and I can just cut off this white, white portion of thread when I'm done. So we want them to be nice and straight. And then what she did was she put them, how did she do it? She put them, must have been over. So she put them over the bar because otherwise this wouldn't work. So she put them over and the, her loom was set up to do this with, like it's how you do that loom. I just liked the concept of how she was doing this. And then she came up from behind like this, like we're coming up behind this, and then went around those two. Oh, I need this to go over the bar though. Shoot. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up. Back it in. Let me re-begin. Okay. Here we go. Oh, that makes more sense because then it's easier to have it come over the top. Well, that makes a good practical sense, Erica. Good job. Um, okay. So we're coming over from the outside. I think it'll be less awkward once I can take this little bar off of the middle here. And we want to keep everybody nice and close together because we're trying to make a nice, even warp tension. That's the whole point of this, as it were. And then we're going to tie a simple overhand knot, as she said. That does look pretty darn even, I'm not going to lie. This lady who literally is teaching us how to do this might know what she's talking about shocking okay so now i'm going to do that again with the other sets of four hopefully i've got four sets of four i don't know that i do and that's okay we will make it work but i cut these all off to basically the same length a little bit of wastage but that's okay um this does look like it might be a really clever way to do this I feel clever doing it. Does that count? <laughs> Counts for me. Okay, and over and under. And then we do another. Try to get them nice and close together. Very sweaty fingers working with wool. My little desk fan's not pointed in the right direction. Okay, 
and then just a simple overhand knot and having this here makes it so I can't over pull it and it's also affixed from underneath here which is not letting me pull it past the bar so simple overhand knot simple overhand knot all right I'm going to do that to the rest of these and that actually looks more efficient and then we just have to start cranking this tighter and remove this all right let me do that I practiced here one this was just to get all the warps to spread out nicely by weaving on them what I find the most difficult to wrap my little needle around is that it doesn't need to be tight packed at this stage I don't know if I'm just seeing people who use fluffier yarns I haven't exactly worked out what is happening that is making me think that everything needs to be packed very tight but I did notice something. I am able to, because this is on a fixed set, I can really like hammer down things with this beater as opposed to my single head loom, which is not fixed at any point. You just pull it towards you. So you're never going to get and exert as much force as you can with something that is literally on a hinge. So um, keeping that in mind, I'm going to try to not um, literally overbeat this. And all we're going to do is one out and one back with each color. We'll weave in the ends at some point. Um, and hopefully, if I don't weave it too tight, I'm trying to remember, uh, my friend Kate told me I need to make a rainbow, like a little arc of my warp thread across the loom so that I know I have enough slack. But for whatever reason, my brain just cannot wrap its little head around the fact that one will be, um, it'll full and it will like kind of felt itself together and bloom, as they say. The yarn shall bloom. Um, I just, for some reason, my brain just does not believe that's going to happen and thinks that I should just be packing it down. Couldn't explain to you why, but my brain has not arrived at the portion of adulthood where it accepts that as canon. All right, so now we're going in with our second color, and we'll weave all these ends in later. Not sure exactly how to keep that out of the way of his brother, but I assume they kind of overlap each other. And there's our happy little rainbow or whatever. And we're just letting it kiss as another person on YouTube. I forget who it was, but whomever it was who gave me some very helpful weaving advice. They also said that your beater should be kissing the weft into place. Very gentle. I do not consider myself gentle um, in any part of my life. My dad has described me as subtle as a heart attack, and that's pretty accurate. Nope, don't beat it harder. You know better. Don't do it. All right, and then we... Put this one down and we pick up this ah, no we flung it it's back rescued rescued organizing or reorg reorg okay ah, i literally just dropped it again this is what happens when you try to work at night with focal dystonia also maybe just don't put it on the edge of your table erica come on come on buddy okay we're setting that one down Let's kiss that fabric back into place again. Okay, here we go. Staying calm. We are the moths. We're weaving in the color of moss because it's calm and it's peaceful and we love it. All right, back across. One and two. And then I will speed this up so that you're not just literally watching me learn how to do this process. All right, leaving my arc, kissing into place, kissing into place. I just, I cannot resist the urge to just 
hammer it flat, but I know that the warp is as important as the weft in this case, and I must remain brave and let it, oh God, lost half of the rainbow. Okay, kiss it into place. And then we're gonna switch, and I'm hoping that it's correct that I want it to like overlock the edge because that's what's happening. Can't, uh, can't go back now. That is my pattern. I could go look at the video again, but that sounds like less than fun. That's kind of a rainbow. I'll take it. Kissing into place. Don't hammer it. Ugh, remapping that in my brain, not just whacking away at it is really hard. I really prefer things that I can just beat to death with a hammer. Subtlety, not my strong suit. All right, well, I'm kissing it into place and all that. Hopefully we will start to see a pattern emerge. But I shall return to you after we've done enough rows that this kind of fills up and we can see if what we're doing is um, making any sort of hound's tooth situation. We're trying. We're trying a new thing. We're learning. All right. See you in a second. Well, it's stripey. Is it hound's tooth? It would only be hound's tooth in the middle here. This is where we'll be looking for the pattern. I don't know. I feel like something's gone awry. We'll see. of day, I have come to realize that the I am not doing anything wrong. What has happened is, is the the only way that my brain will let me describe this, because I'm, I'm sure that there's an actual term for this. I refuse to look it up at this time, but it's like the DPI is wrong. Like the dots per inch is too far apart for us to see the pattern. So like in the way of like, the way that knit like weaving machines start and knitting machines like were the origin of computers my my 3d printer is malfunctioning my dpi is too wide it's putting down too large of a row so these areas would be a proper um hound's tooth were my warps about twice as close together because of the distance between the warps it is making a rectangular hound's tooth rather than a square hound's tooth because the yarn is not fluffy enough. If the yarn was twice as thick, come on, buddy, focus. If the yarn was twice as thick, it would be twice, it would be half as much distance between the warps and twice as much height being added. So you would have less distance in between, double the amount of height being added if I had used something like, oh, did I already put it away? Something like this. If I had used something up up above like an Aran weight. So if I had used a heavier weight yarn because just of the distance of these, I would have had successful hounds toothing. So funny enough, this is um, now not a particularly useful thing. So we might just be making a bunch more mug rugs at this point. And then... Um, I guess we'll have to wash them because now I'm like practicing my whole be gentle with the beater thing and not crush everything down. Um, so I guess I'll just make a mug rug out of this one and then just use up uh, some of the warp. Thank God I didn't make the warp longer. Um, but we will then, I think, rewarp the Petaluma, my kid's rigid Petaluma, and we'll rewarp Petaluma next and try for the hound's tooth on there because that comb 
meaning the heddles, it's called a comb on a rigid heddle loom, but the heddle um, has about twice as many uh, lines in it. Also, I'm curious to see if we could actually warp this like a double heddle loom. I just have to learn how to do that. Anyway, um, what we have made here is a rectangular houndstooth. It is not what we went for, but we learned some very important things about um, how many warps per inch we need to make houndstooth come out. And this is not enough. That is our the primary thing we learned today. So I will finish this off as a rectangular houndstooth uh, mug rug um, and then probably move on and attempt to do it on Petaluma. I thank you so much for coming on this weaving experiment. It is possible to do a houndstooth on the child's toy loom. This one's named Orlando Loom, if you were wondering. Um, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!